Hey YouTube, in this video I'm going to be doing a overclocking guide on the Radeon RX 7800 XT reference card. So this will be the first video that looks at how to actually overclock this card using the AMD Adrenaline software. So you do not need to use MSI Afterburn or any third party overclocking tool. Now you could if you wanted and some of those applications may result in more options in terms of the feature set there but for this guide this is going to be kind of like an entry level intro guide on how to tune the card using the adrenaline software so without further ado let's get into it so just to kind of show the amd adrenaline software or the radeon settings dashboard does give you the ability to overclock the gpu from within the dashboard. So we're going to focus on how to overclock the graphics card. So we're going to ignore the system. Actually to get in here from the Radeon settings, you're gonna click on performance. And then the default is metrics, but you're gonna click on tuning. It will warn you the first time that if you're changing these settings could result in unstable system operation because obviously overclocks aren't guaranteed, especially if you are trying to push for the upper bound, which is what we're going to be talking about here in a little bit. You'll have to agree to that if you're going to want to do this. So we're going to minimize system and CPU because we're not going to be covering those. So we're going to focus only on the GPU. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to change this from automatic to manual tuning. You can also use the built-in presets here for overclock or overclock VRAM or overclock G or undervolt GPU. For best results, you're going to want to do manual tuning. So under manual tuning, first, we're going to do this in an order where we start with the video memory. So the VRAM will overclock that first, and then we will look at the core. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to enable the power limit slider down here and we want to set this to negative 10. So the reason why we're doing that is because we're going to try to see how far this GPU can go before having to increase the power. That way we're trying to see if we can get more efficiency out of the GPU or the same clock speeds for less power. So that's going to be why we set the power limit to negative 10. The other thing we're going to do, you're going to want to expand VRAM and GPU tuning. What we're going to do under GPU tuning is we're going to set the maximum. We're going to set this to advanced control, apply that in the upper right, and we're going to set the maximum frequency to two gigahertz. You want to set this lower than what it currently is in stock. You can go lower than two gigahertz if you want, but I'm just going to do 2000 megahertz or two gigahertz. You can key in a value, apply that change. So that way it runs below the max speed that it runs at stock. And the reason why we're doing this is because we're wanting to eliminate the GPU core from the equation because we're going to first tune the VRAM as kind of a force multiplier for the entire overall performance improvement. So now that we have that set to two gigahertz, we can move on to the VRAM. So the VRAM, what we wanna do here is now with memory tuning with RDNA 3, it does have two different vendors of memory. So you can either have Hynix memory or Samsung memory. If you have Hynix memory, typically you can get about 200 or so megahertz beyond the stock clock. And if you're on Samsung, you can get around 100 megahertz, maybe a little bit more, but not too much more if you're on Samsung. So what we're gonna do, just for a quick example, we're going to first set the timings for the memory to fast timing. So then after that, we're going to go to advanced control so we can key in an actual value. So the default for the Hynix memory, so this reference card, just to kind of show everybody here, it does come with Hynix memory. GPU-Z is a very good tool to use because as you make changes in here, GPU-Z will reflect those changes. So as you can see, the boost Default is 2430 megahertz, but I have reduced it to 2000 megahertz, and it shows that there. Likewise, if we increase this, then it will show a higher value in GPU-Z. So we're equipped with Hynix memory, so we can try to go about 200 megahertz on the VRAM. So we're going to go ahead and set key in 2600 for the max frequency for the VRAM. So when you're running a game, notice how now it's gone up here. So it, it 
2600 is what I specify as the maximum. Now, that doesn't mean that it's going to do that as the maximum. That means it's going to, to get up to that speed. So it looks like it's now doing 2587 or 2586 megahertz. So now what you're going to do is you're going to test using either a game or a benchmark. What I used was Time Spy, but you could use any game. I would recommend using a canned benchmark like Time Spy or anything from 3D Mark or a game that has a built-in benchmark. Something like Horizon Zero Dawn would be really good. Test the memory to make sure it's not artifacting. If the memory is unstable, you will see white spots or flickering. The monitor might start flickering. That indicates that the RAM's not stable. So once you have that keyed in, now you can move on to tuning the actual GPU core itself. So what we do here is we will start raising the max frequency 100 megahertz beyond the default. So the default was about 24. If we go back to the default, just looking at GPU Z for reference, it was 2430. So we can go for 2500 or even 2530 if we wanted. But this is a simple step up to test. So you'll do a benchmark test. You'll see if it's stable at negative 10 power limit and 2500. So then the next step after that, you're going to want to start raising the frequency by 100 megahertz intervals. So we're going to do 2600. We're going to test if that's stable. And if everything looks okay, then you can keep going up. So we're going to do 2700. And this is where, when I tested this card, this is where the kind of the maximum was reached. At this point now, there's not enough power. So what ends up happening is the test scores do not increase. When you reach a point where the test scores no longer result in performance improvements, that means you have to do one of two things. Either you have to raise the power limit or you have to raise the voltage. Now the voltage already by default is 1150. It can't go beyond that. So you would have to raise the power limit in 5% intervals just to see at what point does it actually start reaching the same sort of power limit constraint where the scores are no longer going up. Uh, once you if you're able to continuously get higher scores, you can potentially raise this all the way to plus 15 to see where it kind of maxes out. With that being said, then you can start trying to raise this higher. But what I would recommend or what I would caution is once you're going over 2700, you're going to want to start increasing the max frequency in smaller intervals like 50 megahertz or 25 megahertz. You don't want to keep on doing 100 megahertz jumps just because the limit on this silicon is kind of around 2700. It, I mean, you, you might get lucky, you might be able to do close to 2800, but it really just kind of depends on the silicon lottery. So what I have found for a kind of a relatively quick overclock, I can do on this reference card, I can do about 2700 on the core, 2600 on the memory at plus 15% power limit, and I can set the voltage down to about 1050 millivolts. Now, you only start changing the voltage once the max clock at plus 15% power limit has been obtained. So in my case, at 15%, 2700, that's kind of the maximum that I was able to do on this reference card. You want to stay near the total board power. So in this case, at plus 15%, the total board power on the 7800 XT reference card is 289 watts. So what I'll do is I will fire up a benchmark just to kind of show that. We've put a load on the GPU here. So I have 3D Mark running, Time Spies running. Uh, but the thing that we want to show is the total board power. So when the total board power is maxed out. So 289 is the maximum. You can verify this just simply by raising the power limit and then doing a test with all this stuff at stock. What you want to see is you want to see the point where the score no longer goes up or you reach instability when you try to keep raising the core and your scores are not improving. Okay, so you can see here, I put a load on the GPU. Basically what I did is I started running Unigen, Unigen Heaven's Ring in the background. So we just kind of put this over here just to kind of see what that looks like. So that's going to be running. And 
what we want to see is we want to see the total board power either maxed or bouncing off of it. So it looks like in this case, at 1440p for Unigen Heaven, it is kind of bouncing off. So you can see the total board power is up because we raised the power limit, but we have undervolted it. So we're not hitting 289 anymore. So now what you can do is you can try to step the voltage down further. At some point, it's going to crash or your performance scores when you're benchmarking are going to decrease. And that indicates that you have kind of reached the maximum stable overclock that you can get. So what you'd want to do at that point is you want to increase the voltage back to where it was to the point where it was fully stable, no errors, no crashes, no artifacts, and the total board power was either being achieved or it was bouncing off of it, meaning it's kind of like right there at the limit of what you can get as your max stable overclock. So that's kind of the steps. I will have the steps written down in the description below. The other thing that you could do while you're doing this sort of test is you could also raise the fan curves. You could disable zero RPM if you want and then enable the advanced control and improve the temperatures while testing the overclock by raising the fan speed. That way you are also offsetting the increase in temperature because if you, especially since we are raising the power limit, this is going to result in higher operating temperatures for the GPU. You can save the profile so that if you wanted to load it, or you could also even do per game profile. So the, the other thing too about Radeon settings, you can actually tune the in-game performance on a per game or per application basis. That means, if you have an overclock that is unstable at a specific game because that game either stresses the RAM more or it's, you know, if it just is not stable compared to the other games, you can go into that game profile specifically and you can tune the application to have its own profile. So you can do this on a per game basis. So that's really nice that a lot of this functionality is built into the driver dashboard and you don't have to apply a blanket global overclock if you're somebody who is okay with tweaking and tuning each individual game for the best performance. So that was a look at overclocking the GPU. Hope you guys found this video useful. And if you have any questions, please leave a comment below. And if you like this sort of in-depth coverage, on the channel feel free to subscribe it helps me out it helps me get motivated to make more of these type of videos and guides and with that said i'll catch you guys in the next one thanks